You are probably familiar with carousel posts, and if you're not, this is the type of content that I have in mind. In today's video, I'm going to show you a quick Figma setup that you can use to seamlessly and quickly generate breathtaking and immersive carousel posts for Instagram and other social media. Let's get started. As you probably know, carousel posts are typical for multiple images arranged horizontally. And if done well, you can actually make it look as one giant horizontal image that you just move from the right to left. Right? If you are smart about carousel post design, you can make engaging things where you have like visual elements that go from one carousel element to the other. And that's where you get the immersive experience that is very engaging and effective if done well. So let's just get straight into it. I'm going to use a frame tool and I'm going to create a frame that is 1080 pixels tall right so that's the vertical part of a full hd resolution i'm going to rename this frame to main frame and i'm going to make it let's say that we're going to optimize for maximum of 10 images within one carousel post I, I even think that there is some kind of limitation that you cannot even go over 10 but i'm not sure about that in any case let's go for 10. so let me just type in manually 10,800, which is 10 times the height so the first thing i'm going to do i'm going to create a rectangle and this rectangle is going to be uh, 1080 by 1080 so i pressed r on my keyboard and then clicked once right I'm gonna make sure this rectangle, this square is within the main frame. I'm going to duplicate this so that it aligns perfectly with the first one and then press Command D or actually move it and then press Command D, Command D and then just keep pressing until I fill up the whole width of this main frame, right? Then I'm gonna remove every second square just so that we can differentiate when one ends and the other one begins. Then I'm going to pull out with this selected, I'm gonna pull out a guide from the vertical ruler on the left side and I'm gonna move that right here so that it's right at the right edge of this rectangle, right? You can also see how this guide is positioned precisely at the horizontal 1080 position, right? Let me revert these changes. And it makes sense because it's at the very end of the first rectangle, the first square that's 1080 pixels wide. And I'm going to keep doing this so that I get basically a guide for each, for each square edge like this. And then we are going to remove these squares so that we can easily differentiate and tell where one image ends and the other one begins, right? So we have this frame, these guides move along with the frame if we move that away. And then I'm gonna select these squares and remove them. And all that remains are nine vertical lines. And these guides are going to help us see where these images end, right? Another thing I'm gonna do is create a frame that's gonna be 1080 by 1080 1080 so 1080 by 1080 and this frame is going to be called carousel underscore zero one as in the first image of the carousel then i'm going to duplicate that and you can see that when i duplicate and move it and then keep pressing command d i eventually get to 10 of these so that's five and four so that's now we have 10 in total and yes yeah, so we get underscore zero one on all of these, which I'm gonna select all of them and bulk rename these, which means I'm gonna select them, press command R and then match, I'm gonna type in zero one, right? So we're gonna look for zero one at the end of the name and replace with number ascending, right? I clicked on this option and then rename. So now we get parcel 1098, almost there almost there we just have to revert the changes we just have to select the opposite direction so command r so again match zero one and replace with number descending now the order should be correct yes so zero one zero two zero three the next thing i'm gonna do is select this main frame turn that into a component go to assets and then under design 2 which is the page i'm currently on I'm gonna search for main frame. I'm gonna use an instance of this component, press command X and then select the first carousel and press command V. I'm also gonna press with this main frame component still selected, I'm gonna press option A, which will align the main frame component to the left edge of carousel one. And what I'm going to do now 
is copy this main frame, so Command C, select all of these remaining carousel with a number, right? And then press Command V. This is going to paste the main frame instance into all of these frames. And then what I need to do is select the second carousel, select the main frame within the second carousel and under X coordinates, I'm gonna type in minus, that's minus, 1080, right? So it's gonna move 1080 pixels to the left. Then I'm gonna select carousel number three, then the main frame within this frame, and under X coordinates, I'm gonna type in t minus 1080, but then minus 1080 again. So minus 1080 times two. So this gets moved basically two plots to the left, right? If that makes sense. Then carousel four, I'm gonna type in here, under the X coordinates of the main frame component, minus 1080, minus 1080, minus 1080, right? So with each new frame, I'm adding one minus 1080 so that each of these new frames, this main frame component is moved one slot to the left. So let me just do that for all these remaining five. 1080, minus 1080, minus 1080, minus. So at this point, I should have all of these main frame components arranged in such a way that as I go from carousel one to carousel two, the X coordinates decrease by 1080, right? So that could be the case now. It's a bit tedious, but it's done. And now let me actually test if that's the case. So I'm gonna type in, right? Use my text tool and type in one. I'm going to make this bigger so that it's visible. And I'm going to position this number one into the first section, right? So here's the first section. And then you can see that the number one appears on the first carousel um, frame. Then I'm gonna duplicate this and type in two, two, sorry. And then three and so on. So now that this is finished, you can see how with each of these frames, I get a different number and it precisely matches these sections. So what does this mean? This means that, for example, when I now create an arrow, right, I create a giant arrow going from the first section all the way to the 10th section, you can see how it's being reflected in all of these. So now when I actually select all of these, go to export, and then export all of these layers, this is what I get, right? So I got 10 individual images that I can now upload to Instagram or Twitter or whichever platform supports this type of content. And you can see that I super quickly managed to split up this design that I, well, quote unquote design that I did here into individual images. So this is not particularly impressive, right? You just get numbers and a line but it illustrates the workflow that we have created for us as functional. So let me actually just take a few minutes to design a somewhat interesting carousel post and we're gonna export the result and see what we get. So this is just one of the million ways that you can design a carousel. I used a couple of elements that go across these pages basically and created something that, that creates a cohesive singular design when viewed from a distance, right? So the next step would be selecting these carousel frames, going to export and then exporting these layers. And this is the final result. Thanks to the structure that we set up, we now get six individual images that you can send over to your colleagues or clients, which they can use or you can use to upload to a platform like Instagram and create an immersive and interesting carousel. So as I said, this is basically just a demo design. If you'd like me to create a more sophisticated carousel design, let me know in the comments below or leave a like. Thanks for tuning in and I will see you in the next one.